Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of November 21st, 2013. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight. Um, before we convene in general session, um, first of all, I'll announce that uh, Councilor Murphy, uh, Councilor Carney, and Councilor Tacey will not be attending tonight. They've uh, they passed on some excuses, which uh, as we go <laughs> down onto the, <laughs> into the meeting, you're going to see how, just how fun that is. Um, but we start off each before each meeting we allow the public to speak on any issue for uh, up to three minutes you're not required to speak the full three minutes but you are requested to stop after three minutes so the hope is that finish up your thoughts as three minutes come um, the uh, you should also know that the council is constrained by our rules from commenting so please don't direct any questions to us you're welcome to, but please don't expect a response because th this time is reserved for the public and not to have an exchange with the council. Um, so, I think I've got the rules down. So, first up, Steve Superba, please. Nice to see you all. Uh, Steve Superba, 17 Glen Street, Hoyoke. I own property at 39 Garfield Avenue and pay taxes for that. Uh, I'm reading from a prepared statement. In response to news that broke on September 19, 2013, regarding the situation at the North Carolina Police Department, I composed and submitted two letters to the Gazette and Republican. Both declined to publish these letters without comment. The silence that has accompanied this whole situation is troubling. The situation referred to is the misappropriation of payroll, which stemmed from an inappropriate relationship between two employees of that department. A significant aspect of this case is that it is a potential civil rights violation, one made more untenable by the fact that it is proscribed by city policy, a policy of such significance that employees are required to read and sign it annually. In this circumstance, a male administrator is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a female employee in violation of the city's sexual harassment policy. Uh, much of this silence can be attributed to Chief Sinkwood serving as sole arbiter in the case, to be bestowed the responsibility having sole province over this process is understandable as Chief Sinkwood has uh, established goodwill within the community and among city leaders. Uh, these opinions have been earned by Chief Sinkwitz as a result of his many years of exemplary service, including rising through the ranks of the department and laudable achievements as Chief Executive Officer. Chief Sinkwitz deserves the confidence shown him. But at what juncture does this demonstration of confidence transcend from sound judgment on the part of city leaders to an abdication of responsibility? And having sole responsibility for the outcome of this case, Chief Sinkwitz has been placed in a conflict of interest situation. He is not only being asked to decide the fate of an individual that can be considered his equal and who has been an integral part of his, administration, his administrative team, He's also being asked to review and objectively evaluate information that has the potential to ultimately impact his own reputation and legacy. Please reassess your approach to this situation. Rest the responsibility of the handling of this case from Chief Sinkowitz and place it into fresh pair of objective and impartial hands. History will be the judge, but there is much at stake, including a future review by the court in the probable instance of a sexual harassment lawsuit. At that time, one of the deciding factors in the imposition of financial damages will be the manner in which it is handled by the city. Please reevaluate your approach with the guiding principles, being to maintain the integrity of this process, protect the reputations of all parties involved, and minimize peripheral damage, which includes the morale of the men and women of the police department. An additional consideration is please safeguard your taxes. We entrust you to your management. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Steve. Uh, Jasper, Lipin Jasper Lipinski, how are you? <laughs> it's still Lapienski, Bill. Um, I'm sorry, and I, you know what? I struggle with it, and I knew I was pronouncing it wrong, and I've, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I saw in the uh, agenda that there was another street acceptance tonight and so I figured it was an, a nice time to uh, say something about plowing the bike trails which 
happened last year, in part. Um, I would suggest there are other parts that ought to be done. Um, but more broadly, I am speaking about the principle here. We got the, the practical effect of getting it done. It was used. I think it was really beneficial to the city. I'm glad that it's going to happen again. Um, it doesn't lose sight of the fact that the, the city at large is further along, um, I think, than most places in the country. But we aren't at the point yet where we see the, not, not just the bike trails, but all of the bicycle and pedestrian and non-motorized infrastructure, right, sidewalks, crosswalks, et cetera, as a means of transportation. We see it almost as, you haven't started my timer, by the way. Okay. We'll spot you a minute. How's that? So. You haven't, uh, where was I? Um, I'm trying to be so ethical so It's part of the infrastructure of yes. the, of the so, transportation. Yes, so thank you. <laughs> um, right, so it's, it's not, it hasn't really achieved parity in our minds as far as being transportation. We still see it as recreational. Um, crosswalks are great for shoppers. Sidewalks are great for getting from one house to another. Bicycle paths are great for going for a ride in the sun. Um, but children use it to get to school. Adults use it to get to work. Um, <laughs> adults use it to get to school, for that matter. Um, I know people who have, have lived in Northampton, ride their bicycles to UMass, um, go to school there. So there's a lot of value in it that has to do with the economy and the livelihoods. And just as an example, when, when we make a new road, we put two lanes on it. We don't always put two sidewalks. That's the kind of parity that I'm talking about. Um, and I, I found this in the woods on the way here, and uh, I, I liked it as a, as a prop because I saw the other day on the Rachel Maddow show, she was talking about the law that tried to achieve parity in, in um, coverage between mental and physical health. I think it's, I think it's a good parallel, right? Um, because yes, we are funding the, the sort of minority, but we're not, we're not, we're not taking it seriously as an alternative. We're just doing it sort of recreationally. Um, and here's the policy proposal. The city census asks us a lot of questions. It asks us place of employment. It asks us various different things that are useful as opposed to necessary, <coughs> right? It's not just counting. It's asking us useful things that helps the city make policy. I think the city census should ask whether or not you have a car and what your primary means of transportation is. I think that would make a big difference in helping us adequately make decisions on which kinds of transportation we fund and what we call transportation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's all we have signed up. Is there anyone else who would be interested in speaking before we convene the council? Going once, twice, done. Thank you all. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll, please. The agenda. Here. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Green Here. Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. We determine we have a quorum. Barely. Um, so we'll start off. Um, we have no public hearing scheduled tonight. Other, uh, the mayor is here and has a proclamation to read. Honorable members of the City Council, I have a proclamation that I'd like to deliver uh, this evening. Um, it's entitled Small Business Saturday, November 30th, 2013. Uh, and as some of you may or may not know, um, this is a, a day that's been designated nationwide um, to recognize the small businesses and the contributions of small businesses. So uh, it's in that spirit that I offer this. Whereas the city of Northampton, Massachusetts is proud to be home to the many growing small businesses that create jobs, generate consumer spending, and maintain a high quality of life, 
And whereas in Northampton and Hampshire County, over 3,400 businesses out of 3,544 are small businesses employing less than 49 people, which makes small businesses a very important part of our communities. And whereas 89% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses contribute positively to the local community by supplying jobs and generating tax revenue, and whereas 93% of consumers in the United States believe in the importance of supporting their community-based small businesses, and whereas the Buy Local movement deserves the support of all Northampton residents because their purchases invest dollars locally where they are regenerated in numerous ways, now, therefore, I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of Northampton, Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 30th, 2013 as Small Business Saturday and urge the residents of our community to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the city of Northampton. Um, I note that uh, Dan Yakuza is here from the, um, from the uh, Business Improvement District. And uh, actually, I think I present this to him on behalf of uh, small uh, businesses in Northampton. So, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Dan, you want to speak to that? I would love to. I'm uh, Dan Yacuzzo uh, of 88 North Elm Street, and I am the Executive Director of the Northampton Business Improvement District. Um, I can only say thank you to all of those who um, make the effort to support small businesses. It takes a great deal of effort in this economic climate with the, uh, with, with, with the leveraged competition that uh, small businesses have. Um, it's, uh, it's a tribute to our sense of community for those who support those within the community. So, so we are better off. So we are better off as a, uh, as a, 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 a city and as, uh, as employers and employees, as a former employer. Um, I can tell you that um, I was always grateful because I knew that I had uh, a community support. So um, Small Business Saturday is the, the day after Black Friday, which is not necessarily a day that, that we celebrate as well here in Northampton. But I would ask that all, all, uh, people con all of the people continue to make an effort to support our, uh, our small businesses and, and uh, those who, uh, who live within this community. Thank you. I, and I would add to that that um, an investment in, in, in small locally owned businesses is, is an investment in the community that comes back. There are returns for everybody in, within the community. You know, there are, and uh, we, we met at the Chamber office today to talk about um, the money that goes back into the community, especially to the, to, to the nonprofits um, from, the, from those businesses. And uh, it, it, it leverages so much more support for, for those uh, nonprofits because of the support that the, non, uh, that the, the local businesses uh, receive from, uh, from, from the community. So it, it is a two-way street, uh, and, and the payback is, tr is tremendous. And, and it's also, you know, we are the envy of, of most small cities. Um, but you know, by the nature of the of the creativity and the entrepreneurship of our of our small business owners, we are we are the envy, and uh, and for us to stay that way, it, it, you know, it, it demands that hard work on the part of the consumer, and the local consumer has continued to work hard to support small businesses, and again, on behalf of uh, of those business uh, businesses, I say thank you, and thank you, thank you. Um. We had um, a resolution scheduled at this point, and there's been a request from Councillor Tacey. It was a resolution to uh, recognize and establish uh, to part of a community that recognizes uh, the, the good work and sacrifices made by uh, Purple Heart recipients. Um, Councillor Tacey, as a veteran, has requested that he, uh, we postpone the resolution until our next meeting when he'll be able to vote on that. And um, since there is no time pressure, um, accepting the council's pleasure, I would ask that we postpone until that time. Yeah. So okay. Okay. Um, now we're up to licenses and petitions. Oh no, I'm sorry. One minute announcements. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, any councilors have one minute announcements? Uh, Councilor Adams. This Saturday, in addition to Small Business Saturday, the 
Northampton Senior Center and Community Center on Con Street will be hosting its seventh annual Holidays Craft Festival and Sale from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And there will be crafts people from all around the area. Lunch in Mary's Bistro uh, and coffee and gift shop will be open. That will be from 9 to 2 this Saturday. So I hope people can stop by. Thank you. Councilor Short. Uh, Ward, 3, Ward, Ward 3 Neighborhood Association and Councilor Freeman Daniels and myself, we are co-sponsoring a forum uh, Well, for anyone who wants to learn more about the stormwater um, and utility ordinance. Um, it is on Monday, December 2nd um, at 7 p.m. at Bridge Street School Cafetorium. So come one, come all. Councilor Specker, I suspect you have something similar to say. Yes, and on Tuesday, <laughs> December 3rd, Ward 1 and Ward 2, so Councilor Carney and I will be sponsoring a similar forum um, on stormwater and flood control at the uh, Hampshire Regional Y at 7.30, so that's Tuesday, December 3rd. So I hope you were right about the 2nd, because yes. I'm just I've, I've okay. been confused about dates, so yes, I'm sure. Okay. No, I'm sure. Councilor LaBarge? Yes, and um, we will be doing the same form, and it will be December 12th at the Rounding Road School from 6.30 to 9. Also, mailers will be going out, or uh, brochures will be going out to every household in the, in the city. I think they're going out today. Uh, uh, that will have those dates, times, and places listed, and I believe the city website will also have those available for you. Uh, if you have any questions, also you're welcome and invited to call your counselors. And I encourage everyone to come. Uh, this is the, these are educational forums, and the purpose of which is to bring us all up to speed, so we understand the uh, the need, and also to understand the means by which we will subsidize that need. Um, oh, Councilor Adams. Um, also, the Florence Civic and Business Association will host its 24th annual holiday parade on Saturday, November 30th. And um, it'll start at Trinity Row, and we'll go down Main Street to the Civic Center. Uh, the parade begins at 10. That's Saturday, November 30th. Um, you should know the, the Winter Farmers Market, which used to convene uh, until uh, the end of last year at the old Dynamite Space in Thorns, um, lost their home and consequently a number of people lost their spirit to live because the the prospect of not having uh again local farm provisions uh for winter winter farm stock there was no access to it that problem has been solved and i'd like to say i'd like to give credit where credit is due in large part to yeah. the a brainchild from Councilor adams <laughs> he, he recognized that smith vocational and agricultural school high school is just up the road and uh, recommended that as a possible location. The superintendent and the principal and the, uh, maintenance, uh, the, the maintenance supervisor all agree that this is, this is a perfect solution. So the Northampton Farmers Market will, uh, Winter Farmers Market will convene, will open for business this Saturday starting at nine o'clock in the morning and go till 2 p.m. at Smith Vocational School and Agricultural High School and uh, I commend it to your attention because it's it's well worth it. And uh, I understand there's some kind of feast coming up or some such uh, on Thursday next that might be appropriate. I don't know. I won't be here. So um, this I have an announcement from the district attorney's office. Unfortunately, it's announcing something happened yesterday. So I'll spare you that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, I, my my apologies to the to uh, D. A. Sullivan. So, any other announcements? Okay. There is a petition for. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. This is uh, a petition for a license uh, as a, a dealer in secondhand articles at 375 South Street, Northampton. It's the Cancer Connection Incorporated doing doing business as Cancer Connection Thrift Shop. Um, suspend the rule. Excuse me? You want to suspend the rules? No. Which it's rule? A late file, isn't it? This one's not a late file, so we don't need to suspend rules on this. This one's on the agenda. That's the first item on the agenda. That's our connection. Uh, approval. approval. Oh. Second. 
Any discussion on this? Are the petitioners present? No. Uh, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Uh, this is a petition for street acceptance, Cook Avenue. This is uh, a portion of uh, to refer to the Planning Board and Board of Public Works. Is there a motion to refer? Move to refer. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Now we have a late file. <laughs> this is uh, Jeffrey Miller doing business as Cosmic Cab uh, Company, uh, 3 Market Street, number 4, Northampton. Um, this is... Uh, the vehicle identification is 06 with a capacity of seven passengers. Um, move, move, suspend the late file rule. Second. All those in favor of suspending late uh, suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Usually, Jeffrey has come before us. A number of times and has been very accommodating when we've we've asked questions. He's he's all up to speed with his taxes, I believe, and yes. and safety yep. inspections. Councilor, I just say that this seems to be the only uh, cab company in the last few years that continues to come back and add more uh, vehicles. It seems as though they're doing pretty well. And I'm happy about that. That's that's a good sign. I agree. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, then with the minutes, except the, there's been a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Is that of Edlu? This, no. this is the minutes of the council. Oh, the council minutes, all right. Yeah. Second. There's a second. Any discussion on the minutes, approving the minutes? All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Second. Okay. Uh, this is the minutes on Ed Lou. Second. Seconded. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, this is reappointments. This is appointments to committee. Uh, and here's a letter from the chair. This is a reappointment and new appointments to the committee on Dis the commission on disability. I should make that distinction. It's the commission on disability. Move all move all reappointments. Second. All made and seconded. We, we need to separate. These are reappointments. Right? These are reappointments with one new one. Suspend rule thirty. I just moved on reappointments. Just moved on reappointments. <coughs> okay, so the motion. Is one of those out oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I move all move all reappointments. I, I amend that. Move all reappointments. With the exception of Council of Labor. Yes. Okay. And, okay, so that's Michael Nagy, Tori Eklund, Susan McCreary, Daniel Langer, uh, Gaden Ford, Ruth McGrath, Hannah Coyle. Um, and this is from Tori Eklund, who's the chair of the commission. She writes, as the chair of the Commission on Disabilities for the City of Northampton, I wanted to tell you that the commission supports the reappointment approved by the mayor. Please pass along with the city council. Thank you very much. Um, any discussion on this, on these reappointments? No? Councilor Spector, Council LaBarge. Um, I want to talk for all seven of them right now. Every one of them have been excellent on the Commission on Disabilities. And we've come a long way within a year between the Braille menus and so forth. They work together very closely they're a great group any other comments discussion all those in favor of approving these reappointments please say aye 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 any opposed any abstentions all right uh let's let's address council labards then is it will, uh was there a motion to move i move appointment of reappointment of council Labarge. okay uh, any discussion on that? And, Council, you'll be expected to recuse yourself on the vote. So, All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Recused? 
Okay. Now we have one last one, and that's James Winston, who's a new appointment um, to serve a term from November 2013 to November 2014. Move to refer to Second. appointments and evaluation. Motions are made to refer. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Now we come to an interesting part of our meeting here. The, uh, and I'll explain. As a rule, we would be recessing for the Finance Committee. Uh, unfortunately, two members of a four-member committee are absent, and consequently, there is no quorum. So I'm going to ask for the suspension of Rule 29, which, and I'll read the rule just so that, uh, once I find it, <laughs> uh, that essentially establishes the requirement for counsel to refer financial orders to the Finance Committee. Thank you. Um, the, the rule 29 is Finance Committee, reference and report every order and resolution authorizing a loan, the levying of a tax, or the expenditure of money, with the, ex uh, with the exception of printing of the annual reports, shall be referred to the Committee on Finance before presented, presented to the City Council. And will shall be the duty of such committee to report on the relation of such order, resolution, levy, or expenditures to the finances of the city, but new provisions shall not be added to such a resolution, order, levy, or expenditure by said committee unless directly connected with the financial features thereof and then by recommendation only. The suspension of rules would allow us to proceed with the financial orders that are pending. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Move suspension rule 29 on financial orders 1, 2, and 3. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. So we now we will now proceed. This meeting is going to be really brief because we didn't have a finance committee meeting. Um, this is upon the recommendation, and this is the finance order. This is upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee ordered that the following amounts be appropriated or reserved from fiscal year 2014 Community Preservation Fund, estimated at $1,564,000. $261, $973,000 FY14 local assessment estimate plus $591,261 verified state match for the fiscal year 2014 community preservation purposes. $161,126 from FY14 to, uh, total estimate CPA revenue to the community preservation fund open space reserve account. $161,126 from FY2014 estimated CPA revenue to the Community Preservation Fund Historic Preservation Reserve. $161,126 from FY2014 total estimated CPA revenue to the Community Preservation Fund Affordable Housing Reserve. And $77,563 from FY14 total estimated CPA revenue to the Community Preservation Fund Administrative Account and $1,003,320 uh, $1, from FY14 total estimated CPA revenue to the Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserve. Also, the following amounts be appropriated from the, C, uh, the Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserve account for FY14 Community Preservation bonding repayment purposes, $75,000 for principal and $20,525 for interest for the Bean Farm Bond and $11,967 for interest uh, for the Florence Fields ban. And that's it. Um, good point. Um, I, uh, <laughs> the authority vested in me, I'm going to um, appoint Council LaBarge as part of the enroll enrollment committee. Scared you, didn't I? That, that <laughs> yeah. That's not your so, Okay. Uh, for those of you following at home, the enrollment committee means uh, Council LaBarge has the, uh, is the authority to sign with Councillor Adams uh, any orders that we pass. Uh, the mayor is here to speak to this issue. Your Honor? Uh, uh, actually, this is coming from the Community Preservation Committee, but um, Ms. LaValle couldn't be here tonight. So essentially, this is the um, standard allocation that's required by Mass General Law. So. Mm -hmm. Um, 10 percent must go into the open space account 10 percent must go into the uh, historic preservation reserve 10 percent into the affordable housing reserve the five percent is the administrative uh, uh, allocation for the administrative expenses the rest goes into that uh, uh, 
the remainder just goes into one fund. Um, and then we've got the um, required uh, payments uh, for the bean farm and the Florence Fields uh, bond authorization. We're requesting two readings on this because it's important that these are in place in order for uh, the finance director to be able to set the tax rate, um, which you'll be dealing with later on this evening. So that's why we're requesting two readings. It's non-controversial. This happens every year. It's been delayed because we were waiting to get the final numbers as to how much had been raised through the CPA so that we could then make these allocations. You were waiting to hear from the state. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that was a little bit delayed this year. So once again, the state setting the deadline and then making it as difficult as possible to get to that deadline then. Okay. That was my comment. I'm sorry. Uh, any any questions mm -mm. of the mayor relative to this issue? Is, it, is there a motion to move to approve? Is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? We got to pick up the slack for the counselors <laughs> who aren't, aren't here. Um, okay. Uh, discussion on this. Councilor Freeman Daniels. These um, pres these reserve accounts they're required by the state. Is that right? By the state, uh, uh, by the state, right, the state enabling state. legislation for CPA. Right. The, 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 these are proportional to the state mandate, right? The CPA law requires us right. to set up these accounts. So. so it's easier for them to check at the end of the year whether we spent the right amounts. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this will ha the request is for two readings. I should also point out that this is a financial order and it's going to require all six votes of the members because we don't have, uh, once again, we have three members missing. But the fact is the rule requires that six vote majority needs to pass a financial order, just so everyone knows. I, I have one more question, Mr. Sure. President. And this might be for the finance director. When does the bond for Florence Fields, uh, when is the money, when is it going to get bonded? Um, actually, accept a motion to recognize Susan Wright. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So uh, Florence Fields is going to be bonded probably in January oh. this year. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Barge? Yes. 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 Is there a motion to suspend rules? Suspend rule 14. Second. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Move to approve. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Second. This is in second reading. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Yes. Thank you all. The next financial order is an FY 2014 uh, budget transfer of $93,562 to settle collective bargaining agreements with the NAPEA, the NAME, and the FC. Um, is there a motion to recognize them? Put it on the floor? Well, we don't move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Um, I may actually just quickly read the, uh, the, the narrative that I submitted. I'm submitting for your consideration a financial order necessary to fund negotiated collective bargaining agreements between the City of Northampton and the Northampton Association of Municipal Employees, NAME, the Deputy Fire Chiefs, DFC, and the Northampton Administrators and Professional Employees Association, NAPIA. The funding to settle these agreements uh, was appropriated as part of our FY 2014 budget under the Reserve for Personnel line item, and this order requests a budgetary transfer of $93,562 from the Reserve for Personnel to the various departments in which these employees work. Um, so we have signed tentative agreements with uh, these three um, uh, bargaining units. Uh, they're they're tentative because all of them are subject to funding um, by the city council. So um, uh, I am bringing these orders for you uh, to get that funding. Um, they've been the agreements have been ratified by each of the unions. Um, these are three-year contracts, uh, which um, 
which is significant because we've been in a period over the last several years of doing basically one-year contracts. Um, so this has allowed us to really clean up uh, language from old contracts and create a nice uh, unified uh, contract document, as well as giving us stability going forward with three-year contracts. So for name, um, the uh, breakdown of the COLAs is uh, beginning for on January 1st of 2014, a 1% COLA. In FY15, a 2% COLA, and in FY16, a 1.5% COLA. Uh, for the deputy fire chiefs, uh, our contract with um, them provides for placement on a new skep uh, a scale with steps and a zero COLA in FY14. In FY15, it provides for a 0.5% COLA, and in FY16, it provides for a 1% COLA. The agreement with NAPIA provides for a 3% COLA in FY14, a 0% COLA in FY15, and placement on a new step scale. And in FY16, it provides for step movement or a 2% COLA for employees at the top step. Uh, so I am, uh, I'll get to the other, we have another order coming up which I can address, which is uh, slightly different, but those are the orders um, before you, and, uh, and I would respectfully um, seek the council's approval so that we can ratify fully ratify these contracts um just for clarification cola is cost of living adjustment that's so correct so that's correct any questions about this uh, Councilor Adams. Um, a couple of questions so, so you want two readings because you want to ratify the kind yes we'd like to be able to um institute these contracts and these are contracts that um, go back to July 1st of 2014 uh, of 13 rather the start of the fiscal year so um, some of this funding will be retroactive for these employees um, because they we haven't had a contract for the first part of the of the fiscal year so we'd like to get that in process and if it passes um, how much is left in that in in the well, if, in the um, account. So uh, the um, account starting balance personnel reserve uh, is 239, 889, 70. Um, uh, with, the, with these transfers, um, plus the, the second transfer that I hope the council will consider, which is another collective bargaining um, related one, we will have a balance of $124,091 in the personnel reserve account. <laughs> We still have some <coughs> other collective bargaining agreements that I'll be, uh, my hope is to bring forward another set of them uh, at your next meeting in December. Um, we still have, uh, we're finishing negotiations with um, AFSME, which are the clerical workers, and uh, those are nearing completion. We hope to have that before you. And then, of course, um, as is customary, when we complete all of the um, represented employees, we then uh, uh, do um, a cost of living for non-represented employees. But we typically wait until all the collective bargaining contracts are finished. Um, and we typically uh, base the COLAs for the non-represented on what the represented uh, members of their department receive. So we'll have more coming forward. We had budgeted, um, you may remember uh, during the um, budget process, we had budgeted a certain amount to this line item to be able to accommodate the anticipated FY14 contracts that we've been working on. Um, so this is, and, and of course we still need funds, remaining funds that we use throughout the year for um, other uh, personnel related matters that may arise, um, new hires or changes or things like that that might occur. So, so we're on target um, with that particular fund. Couple other questions. Um, the 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 flea the the flea order mm -hmm. um, was separate from this. Is that because that's something the trustees negotiated? I, I was just wondering. I just thought it would be important to distinguish it because it was a slightly sep different order, um, uh, because uh, that was um, essentially what we're doing in that order is we're increasing the appropriation to Forbes Library, just the overall appropriation to Forbes Library. Um, because as you know, I don't, we don't, the city doesn't negotiate those contracts, the Board of Trustees do. 
Um, and so I, I felt it was important to just distinguish between the two. Um, so that's why we did it on a separate order, just so there wouldn't be confusion um, that somehow these were city unions or, or um, so we just thought it was, and, uh, and as you know from the actual order itself, the order for those at home, these are actually, it's broken down into many, many small pieces because it's going into each individual department where these uh, employees work. Whereas in the case of the library, we're just making an increase to their overall budget. Um, and then they'll make the allocation that they need for their salaries. So, um, And, and th this order, I guess in this order you chose to put all these um, bargaining units together. But if the council wanted to, we could separate them. Right. I mean, just, mm -hmm. yeah, just most definitely. Yeah. They're just, I mean, just, we, we, uh, again, we had, these are the three that we had completed. And so we wanted we to, uh, three. just bring them together wow. as a consolidated order, but we certainly could have done that, um, sep into separate orders. And the final question is if you happen to know, or the finance director knows off the top of your head, um, how many employees are in the deputy fire chiefs union? Uh, there are five members of the deputy fire chiefs union. Thank you. And I can, uh, there's 57 members of uh, NAME, um, and there are 55 members of NAPIA. Thank you. Just for reference. Is it the council's pleasure to separate? No. no. Council Freeman Daniels? Uh, I'm not going to be here much longer, um, and uh, I feel comfortable uh, generally with the mayor's uh, handling of uh, labor relations, but. Um, these are significant contracts, three years, and um, I hear reference to steps and new um, language and so on. Uh, I would have, um, I hope that in the future, uh, which looks to me now a, a longer future, maybe in a couple of years, um, the mayor is, uh, uh, the mayor may uh, bring the council into executive session to talk about um, these long-term contracts and. Uh, how what he or uh, what in this case he feels he wants to uh, get accomplished before it's brought before the council uh, and we get a summary of it but uh, I feel as I said before I feel comfortable with these and uh, ready to vote on these tonight but uh, I do think that the council can exercise uh, greater scrutiny like it has in the past regarding a particular department over the uh, over all the contracts and uh, ask for an executive session with the mayor. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Council Freeman Daniels? Aye. Council Labar? Yes. Council Short? Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Council Dwight? Yes. Suspend uh, rule 14. Second. There's a motion made and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll accept a motion. Uh, move to approve on second reading. <laughs> Is there a second? Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Uh, next up, is you heard it referred to this is the following uh, budgetary transfer be made uh, this is uh, budgetary transfer of fifteen thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars collective bargaining of Forbes Library Employee Association with the unfortunate acronym of FLEA <laughs> that you heard um, and the mayor has already spoken to this but you can elaborate more. I think actually you pretty you, you broke it down pretty well. The, yeah, the I, I distinction. This was, this was a request made to me by the trustees and the library director, um, who uh, met, uh, who updated me on the status of their negotiations, and um, and this additional funding would be needed to be allocated to their budget um, in order to uh, allow them to to make this agreement. Um, and the allocation of their budget is made by elected members of the community. So they are dis uh, um, um, Councilor Adams, former trustee of the Forbes Library. But the, um, just so everyone understands how the, how the, the lines of authority work on this. Any questions on this? Move to approve. Second. Second. It, OK. <laughs> I thought, uh, roll call, please. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. 
Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Yes. Council Freeman Daniels? Aye. Council Brock? Yes. Suspend Rule 14. Second. Motion's been made to suspend rules. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion for the second reading? Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Another roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. And now we come to the second reading of the uh, setting the tax rate for the city of Northampton. Uh, accept a motion. Put it on. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, tax rate, the factor of one. Factor of one. Okay. This is, yes, yeah, so the okay. Northampton okay. City Council, the motion is the Northampton City Council approves for fiscal year 2014 a residential factor of one in closed levy percentages. Um, thank you. That's an important distinction to make. Um, the d the discussion and the debate and and in fact, actually, I, it just uh, appropriate to this is that uh, Councilor Adams and I have, uh, at a citizen's request or recommendation, are considering establishing an ad hoc committee to study the uh, potential abatement prospects for the coming for the next fiscal year when we review the tax rate again um, and to just investigate the appropriateness and the effectiveness of adjusting any rates so that we can become a little more informed when we, when we have this debate next time. Council so is, you, you mean the abatement process or the some of the exemptions and credits? Well, I think I think uh, personally I would like the discussion on all of the, the, the whole thing. Um, I'm not. We haven't. We've we've only knocked it around on an email so far. So, and, but I mean, I think they're worthy discussions, and it's in. There are a few things that we do more importantly than actually this, the, uh, than set the tax rate for the community. So, um, it, at the very least, we should be as informed as possible going into that debate and discussion. Well, this this is the moment where we get to raise taxes. <laughs> yes, that's. <laughs> get to <laughs> yes, it, yes it is this is this is why we get paid the big bucks any further discussion what well, I, mean, I just want to that's that's an important feature I mean we, we passed the override but we didn't we don't right. have to accumulate we don't have to raise the funds if we don't want to I mean this exactly. is really the moment where the council this is this is taxes. where we this is putting the period at the end of the sentence. The override was approved, but this is it figures. This determines how that is proportionally paid for, and so you're right. We we actually could we could we could really change things significantly, um, and it did pass first reading, of course, and there's an opportunity to change it in second reading. That would be a dramatic night, and Chad would actually have something to write about. So, <laughs> and the mayor would. Probably plots right on the floor at the time, but. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a family program. So, um, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Bard? Yes. Councilor Short? Yes. Councilor Speck? Yes. This is also in second reading. This is the FY 2014 Board of Health budgetary transfers of $23,313 for the reworked Amherst Sanitarian contract. You'll all recall the history there. Amherst basically, <laughs> well, never mind. No editorializing. <laughs> <laughs> Amherst. <laughs> second. Uh, um, uh, I'll accept the motion to put it on the floor. There was in second. Uh, it's made and seconded. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Are you ready for a roll call? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Short? Yes. Councilor Speck? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Short? Yes. Councilor Speck? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. No. You want, oh, up, 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 up. Um, next up, got one. Multitask badly here. Uh, this is a financial order. This is a reprogram $4,720, $21.60. 
for replacement pistols to tactical equipment for police department. This is second reading. Move to approve. Second. Seconded. Any uh, any discussion? This is this is a common um, scheme of clock actually to uh, make new pistols cheaper than uh, replacing the old ones. Yeah. So I guess we're we're playing right into it, but it is cheaper. So it is cheaper. It's like buying an iPhone. Planned obsolescence with the, with the, with upselling. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. They don't have a block app. We don't have a block app. Aye. Councilor Bard? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. You laugh, however, the, the fact that you can actually do a 3D printer of a gun, I'm sure that a Glock app is not too far down the pike. Okay. You want me to read the whole thing? Okay. This is upon the recommendation of City Clerk Wendy Mazza. This is the results of the biennial multiple uh, municipal election held in the city of Northampton on Tuesday, November 5th. Holy cats, there's a typo <laughs> here. It's the year 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Very far in the future when we have Glock apps. Um, a Scribner's error. So it's 2013 B and it is hereby declared according to the returns of the election officer and the records prepared by the city clerk. Whereas it appears from the records of the several election officers and the records of the city clerk for the biennial municipal election held on Tuesday, November 5th, 2013, that the persons named below severally received the highest number of votes for the several offices herein specified. Be it therefore hereby ordered that said persons are hereby declared elected to such offices as follows. Candidates elected at the bi biennial municipal election on November 5th, 2013. Mayor David J. Narkowitz, four years from uh, first Monday of January 2014. City Clerk Wendy A. Mazza, uh, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Councilors at large, Jesse M. Adams and William H. Dwight, two years from first Monday of January 2014. Council from Ward 1, Maureen T. Carney, two years from first Monday of January 2014. Council from Ward 2, Paul D. Spector, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Council from Ward 3, Ryan R. O'Donnell, two years from the first Monday of 24, January 2014. Council from Ward 4, Gina Louise Chiara, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Council from Ward 5, David A. Murphy, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Councilor from Ward 6, Marianne Labarge, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Councilor from Ward 7, Elisa F. Klein, two years from the Monday of January 2014. Two members of the school committee at large, Blue M. Duvall and Kari Nykertruk, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Member of the school committee from Ward 1, Pam Hanna, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Member of the school committee from Ward 3, Howard T. Moore, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Member of the school committee from Ward 5, Ann Hennessy two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Member of the school committee from Ward 7, Downey R. Downey Meyer, two years from the first Monday of January 2014. Three superintendents of Smith, that's <laughs> crikey, uh, it's, it's supposed to be Smith Vocational and Agricultural School. It's something entirely different, but this is uh, Michael Kaling, uh John Cotton, and Tom Fitzgerald, two years from Monday of January 2014. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, elector under the Oliver Smith will, David A. Murphy, two years from Wednesday of May 2014. And two trustees under the will of Charles E. Forbes, Russell Carrier, Marjorie Hess, four years from the first Monday, January 2014. Um, I would ask for a motion to. to approve. Second. <clears throat> Councilor Adams. I think it's strange that we vote on this, but. Voters decided it maybe it's state law or something. I believe it is. 
What would happen if we don't vote for them? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I, this kind of speculation makes me very nervous. Like, I mean, guys, could we separate out individual I'm planning names? on voting against it, but... Well, I think in the interest oh, of, of lengthening the meeting, which is promising to be very short, we could actually review each, each, <laughs> each election result. I prefer to trust the city clerk on this okay. one, but, but it's entirely up to... It's the council's pleasure. Oh, question. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for it this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the question's been called. Does this require a uh, roll call? No, it's not a financial. Let's do one for fun. <laughs> yes. 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 Aye. Yes. That was fun. Okay. It's not like I set the bar real high here. Okay. This is in order to seek uh, special legislation to allow the issuance of an annual all alcohol, all alcoholic hotel license over quota to the Fairfield Inn and Suites on Con Street, Ooh, second, second reading, second reading, second, and made. Any discussion? So, so far as we know, this just this authorizes the mayor to ask the state, petition the state for this. Exactly, we are freeing the mayor to petition the legislature in our name. Or an over quota license. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. It's passed in second reading. <clears throat> this is also in second reading. This is a permit required for structures on streets and sidewalks, uh, public art. In the second reading. I'll accept a motion. A second. Motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, I'd like to move to recognize George Myers from the Arts Council. Second. There's a motion made to recognize George Myers. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Sorry I didn't sign up for the public comment. It wasn't. That's, no, that's fine, George. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that the Arts Council is here to support this motion. Um, we really appreciate um, Councilor Freeman Daniels and Councilor Adams for reaching out to us about this issue. Um, I don't think I have much else to add except that you know we, we do appreciate that that gesture. Any, um, George, um, I don't know if you heard my uh, my objections that I expressed. I don't know if you heard those, no, but I'm sorry, uh, I tune in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, fortunately for you, you can stream it at home at, at your convenience. I know what my night's going to be filled because <laughs> that meeting went till eleven thirty. If it's any consolation, so they, this one's not. Um, what I my concern mm -hmm. that I had expressed and I shared with uh, the sponsoring counselors mm -hmm. was. Um, defining an arbiter of what is art and what qualifies as art and I actually while I do trust implicitly the current existing arts council uh, to be have a very wide latitude in what qualifies even as controversial art because that's my concern is that the loss of potential establishment of art that might be considered controversial and I know that there are a number of brave souls on that committee who would who would be willing to um, take some heat for uh, some decisions. Um, but then we're establishing a law that goes beyond this particular group. So, um, and that, that was my only one. A at the same time, I recognize and uh, the forcefully made argument uh, by Councilor Spector, uh, among others, uh, that, that there's, we do need some arbiter other than just sort of randomly some department head just sort of sort of figuring it out. Precisely, yeah. We, there was a, a fairly robust discussion around this, and, and there's, there's no interest on the parts of the Arts Council to be seen as, you know, czars that are the, this final authority over art, and that we would be fairly liberal in our, in our, um, our uh, estimation of those, you know, those applications, and that we don't want to spend our time becoming a, you know, design review board or anything of that nature, and that our interest is in empowering and encouraging and funding artists to do and make art in our town here. So, um, you know, we're not going to be, a, you know, a parochial board that is looking to shut down. And I understand your your uh, concerns with, you know, legacy issues there. Um, I would say that I don't think the Department of Public Works is going to ensure in their permitting process that they're, they're going to be the, the ones that will let you, you know, be fairly, fairly permissive in the type of art that gets in the street. So I think the concern is, is, uh, is wider than just where we come down on those decisions. But again, we're not interested in being a bureaucratic, um, you know, red tape stop before artists get their artwork out there. Our, our job is to encourage, um, you know, that's our charge is to be there to make art 
visible as opposed to the, the opposite. I, and I, I would encourage uh, the Arts Council to consider rules that might emphasize that aspect so that, that in the interest of legacy that there exist rules with a sense of passing forward that, that, that this is, uh, and I don't, and I wouldn't even begin to know how to phrase this because I understand it gets down to what is art argument that that yeah. that rabbit hole is not worth venturing down right now. Yeah, but that, that's why your meetings are until eleven thirty. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. Oh, uh, there is conversation about looking at um, uh, language that has been developed by other you know boards and um, towns and at the state level um, so that they can be fairly broad um, and and again permissive in a way that allows us to, to exercise our discretion uh, without being you know, overly controlling of what can and cannot be out there. Council Adams. I also offered uh, to work with um, the Arts Council and, and Director Foote on, on creating rules. And um, also for the public's knowledge, um, Arts, um, Arts Department Director Brian Foote wrote a strong letter of support for the, for the ordinance. Thank you. Which I have here as well, so. Would you like me to read the letter? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Dear City Council, I'm writing to express my support for the public art ordinance that is before you tonight on second reading. On first reading, the ordinance was passed by a slim margin of five to four. There were concerns by some councilors that the Arts Council could become public arbiters of art and will enforce their specific tastes onto the community. I was an Arts Council board member for three years and a staff member for over a year before taking over as director. I do not share this concern. In fact, we discussed this very issue at the Arts Council meeting when the ordinance was referred to us. And after this discussion, we voted unanimously to refer it with a positive recommendation to the City Council. Further, I believe that you have, that you have to have faith in the appointments by the Mayor that you, the City Council, confirm to promote, the quality, uh, to promote quality public art. It would be a great benefit to the public art of Northampton if the Arts Council were given the opportunity to weigh, uh, to weigh in on public art projects. Such an opportunity is mandated by this ordinance. With or without this ordinance, some entity will decide what public projects will go up. Shouldn't the Arts Council have a voice in that process? Our community prides itself on its arts and culture. It is one of the things that make Northampton a destination city. The public art ordinance before you tonight will encourage high quality public art. Please pass this ordinance. Sincerely, Brian Foote. And that's entered into the record. Just to supplement what Brian said, you know, it's been, uh, you know, it's been great having the, um, you know, the cooperation of the, the council here with the board and working with the mayor on the um, cultural district initiative that's been going on here. So I think an important part of this, a lesson from this, is that that the concerns that are expressed in that vote, which I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't aware of the five to four vote, um, are things that came up with us too, but we feel that a strong relationship with the city council and the mayor's office are the, exactly the type of relationships that would prevent that those type of negative um, instances from occurring. Uh, yeah. Councilor Freeman Dane. Yeah, I want to echo that, that kind of relationship thinking. Um, you know, when, when you have this, when this is part of the law, what you what you do is you're you're incorporating the arts council into the conversation when it comes to uh, when it comes to public projects, frankly, and um, and especially public art. I mean, it, it what it does is it gives um, it opens up. I think I think it's going to open up lines of communication that heretofore were not open, uh, and it's I think it will probably lead to um, the proliferation uh, of pro excuse me proliferation of um, of more art in the public square t um, because of this because it will give the Arts Council a seat at the table and it will be a it's a priority for the Arts Council and it does isn't necessarily one for um, some of the other uh, departments in the city that have uh, real control over the, the public uh, space and the infrastructure so um, I think that this will have uh, this will have a lot of upside as well as encouraging high quality uh, public art in the city. Well, in the absence of a perfect solution, I feel I, I have come around to believe that this is the best possible solution given the circumstances. Uh, and I would also encourage us at some point to consider this to extend to performance on sidewalks as well and in the city um, for, for the same reasons that this was originally advanced. 
Are there any other questions? George, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, roll call on this, please. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Well, I'll say yes, too. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Yes. Councilor LeBron? Yes. It passes unanimously in second reading. <clears throat> this is um, this is also in second reading. This is to ensure traffic mitigation includes specific project fact-based analysis. Uh, this is a request from the planning board, uh, from the planning office. Uh, is there a motion to put it on the floor? Second. Any further discussion, Councilor Freeman? Yeah. I, um I asked for this to be uh, separated out from the last meeting just so we could get the language right. And I think uh, we, we really actually didn't change anything, just got the, got the, the paragraph right. Um, I am curious, though, and I'm, if I wish the, I, I'm willing to vote on it, but I wish that the planning, someone from OPD was here tonight because I do wonder why, if you're conducting a fact-based analysis of a specific project, um, the, uh, the, um, that the, that the the payments would not exceed a, a arbitrary number. Um, so I wonder if that number should be uh, increased uh, to better reflect the outcome of a fact-based analysis. In fact, in the second sentence, which really is, it's hard to say that this is law. It seems to be more uh, just a conversation. Past experience has been that mitigation of all traffic impacts would be higher than the maximum amount allowed and so many projects are assessed, assessed the maximum allowed by the table. That's, it's hard to really call that law, but uh, it's sort of more of a sort of a broad generalization. But the, it, we're making it law, uh, and I'm just curious if, um, if, these, if this table needs to be changed as well. And that, now, there will be some consequences to that. It, it will increase the maximum allowable uh, cost it will increase the maximum cost to a developer, and so it could make Northampton less uh, appear less friendly as far as development goes. But if it's really the case, according to a fact-based analysis, that there is traffic, there are traffic impacts that need to be mitigated, then we're doing the the public a service by uh, by raising these fees. And it's a, definitely a trade-off that I was hoping. Um, well, I hope that the future council can talk about right. it. I, as I recall. Um, Director Fiden's comments to that effect is that the, the, enable, the state enabling law has since changed and required, as you said, kind of almost an arbitrary change in language to, to express an intent that's already, uh, that's, that was basically practiced anyway. So it's. I, I think, what, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I think Director Fiden, what he clarified was that the current practice of the of the planning department is to conduct a fact-based analysis but it's that's that's it's good though because that's now mandated by the supreme right. court so that's the i think that's the uh that's why we're adding this language but i'm i'm curious about this maximum amount allowed and whether that can't be adjusted um we know that there's a lot of excellent projects that take place regarding traffic calming um that come from uh, this, the, this exact paragraph uh, that the, the law, the laws regarding it, and um, I mean, let, let's face it, some of the some of the projects around the city that many people associate with with traffic calming are, are almost entirely paid for from this account. So, um, if if indeed there's greater mitigation than the max than the maximum set uh, that's required from a fact-based analysis, then uh, the future council might want to examine that any other discussion um, roll call please Spector? yes 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 uh, now we're up to the point uh, for updates from the council president and committee chairs I have no updates uh, council Transportation Traffic uh, Transportation Parking Committee is looking for members uh, for two of its committees now. Commission, excuse me, looking for two committees. Um, one in the Public Transit Committee, um, especially a user of um, 
of the public transportation system, the uh, bus system especially. Uh, if there's a, a user of the, the bus system uh, that wants to be at the table when PVTA comes and talks to the city uh, and is uh, also involved in uh, promoting uh, effective public transit, um, please go to the TPC website and, and, uh, uh, and um, um, find one of your commission, Maryland commissioners and let them know. Also the parking committee. The parking committee has um, suffered uh, another resignation uh, and uh, therefore is below its quorum. They're, it's looking for um, a member from the business community, especially someone from the central business district uh, who has an interest in uh, a material interest in the in the parking of the city and also other public uh, other members of the public. Again, go to the Transportation Parking Commission. You can contact me directly. Um, and, and, and I should note that it's coincidental with uh, uh, the forums that were conducted by the Energy Commission. Uh, the number one item on uh, energy management in the community is based on transportation. So I would recommend anyone who's, who, who expressed their concerns at that forum investigate an opportunity to be part of that discussion and actually affect policy. Any other chair announcements? Uh, any information requests? I have new business. Uh, okay, new business. I have new business for consideration for next meeting, Mr. President. Okay. And any other new business? Okay. As loath as I am to say this, I'll accept a recommendation to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much, and have a good night.